name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Uh, it is so great to be with you here this evening on this beautiful Saturday night. This great gift we have in this beautiful weather, but today we celebrate an even greater gift. The greatest gift we have, the most holy body and blood of Jesus Christ, the Feast of Corpus Christi. But before we can receive the body and blood of our Savior and to be transformed by it, first we must acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to enter into these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion grant us we pray so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever amen A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how for 40 years now the Lord, your God, has directed all your journeying in the desert so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its seraph serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock, 
and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one, we, though many, are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. said to the Jewish crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man, drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. 
For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. During the stay at home period of our recent past, there were things that we got excited about that we probably didn't get excited about before. And for me, that was getting takeout. So if I woke up and I would come down into the kitchen and Father, having already been up for five hours, would have said, hey, would you like to get takeout tonight? And that would be like the most exciting thing. And then all day, I wouldn't eat. I would just wait for the takeout. And uh, one we went to a uh, fair often, uh, time, you know, once every couple weeks, would be our favorite uh, steak place. We'll call it Oklahoma Street Home or something. But it was a great place. But you know, Father didn't really vary his selections much. He basically got what he ate every night, which was a salad with a piece of fish on top. And you know, when you go to order that, it has the calorie counts right next to it. So he got something with like 850 calories, which was really small. And then I'd go and order, you know, the ribeye, 1,200 calories. The salad with French dressing and croutons, 450 calories. The baked potato with butter, no chives, uh, 450 calories. All of these extras, and then the rolls with the cinnamon butter. You know, it added up to about 2,000 calories, which is supposed to be our normal intake for the whole day. But then, you know, if you didn't eat all day, then you wanted something else. And I wanted the onion, the fried onion. And then you look at the calorie count on that, 1,970 calories. So I had it checked, and then I unchecked it. But we eat, and we look forward to eating, especially when it's pretty much the only thing that is out of the ordinary, we eat, at least I do. And a lot of these foods, after you eat them, you feel those calories. I feel when I eat at that place, I think, why did I eat that much? Why did I order that much? I don't need it. You feel those calories. You know that you ingested that. Well, brothers and sisters, Today we come and we have a celebration for this great feast day in which we celebrate the body and blood of Christ. Food. But it really doesn't fill us up when we eat it. You know, one host has less than one cow. And yet Jesus says, if we do not eat his body and his blood, which we receive at communion, we do not have life. What do you mean we don't have life? I have that big meal, and it gives me calories which I need to operate my body. Without food, we cannot operate. But there must be something else going on here because a little host with its calorie count cannot provide me enough sustenance to live my life. Jesus must be talking about something else, and of course he is. We are body, which is fed by food, which was fed by manna, which, G which God provided in that first reading. But we are also made of soul, both. And food, no matter how good, cannot feed that soul. That is what the body and blood of Christ provides for us. That is what nourishes the soul. And without one or the other, we cannot live. And so that's why Jesus says, without 
eating his flesh and drinking his blood. He says it over and over and over again. It sounded like a repeat, but he's not making it up. We are eating his flesh and drinking his blood every time we receive Holy Communion. And that gives us life. And now what life? The life of Jesus Christ, divine life, eternal life. And he says, whoever will have life because of me, that we don't just have it in the future when we need it when we die, that we have it when we receive it. We have eternal life. We have divine life now. And that is why this gift is so awesome, that we become participators in divine life as soon as we receive his body and his blood. Some people will say, especially since the changes in the Mass, that we receive Holy Communion now after Mass if you come to church. And some people will say, well, I can't make a proper Thanksgiving in front of the tabernacle. And of course, this is extraordinary, and hopefully we'll go back, and maybe go back sooner than we hope, sooner than we think, to a proper place in the Mass. But right now, it's not possible. So people say, I don't like it, that we have to leave right after Holy Communion. And I, I don't particularly like it either. But understand this, that when we receive the body and blood of Christ, we ourselves are the tabernacle. Jesus lives in us. So when we walk out of the church... We are not leaving Jesus. He is not traipsing behind us. He is in us. He means this. That we receive his true flesh and his true blood. And he is in us. And that cannot be taken away. And you know we hear these surveys. Uh, only a certain number, a small number of Catholics believe in the true presence of Jesus. And we all bemoan that, and of course we should. But how many of us, even those who know it, live as if Jesus is in us, as if we truly receive his life every week, as if when we walk out, we are living the life of Jesus Christ because he is in us. Because if we don't, let's add ourselves to that number of those who don't believe in the true presence. But here's the wonderful thing, brothers and sisters, that when we leave, and we suffer uh, people who insult us or make fun of us, or we have a loss of hope, or whatever it is, that we are living the life of Jesus. We are walking with him on his cross and resurrection. And when we have joy, and we have excitement, and we have happiness, we have the love of family and friends, we are experiencing his resurrection. So we truly are living his life in this world. And what does Jesus say that when, what happens when we live his life in the world? That we will live with him in eternal life in the world to come. And just a special note to our brothers and sisters who can't be with us at the altar. Now we can't receive, some of us, because of this pandemic, the body and blood of Christ. But does that mean that Jesus does not give us his life? Absolutely not. That Jesus does not get angry with those who cannot be with us because of this pandemic. No, when we pray that spiritual communion prayer, that we invite him into us, it is not make-believe. Just as receiving his body and blood is not make-believe. It's not just kind of in us as a symbol. But he is in us completely and totally. Just as he provided for those Israelites leaving Egypt in the desert, and he made do in the desert and gave them everything they needed. He does the same for everyone who is not able to receive physically the body and blood of Christ. He provides for you. In anticipation of that day when we can all gather together as a parish family and receive the one body and blood of Christ. Brothers and sisters, we have a true celebration today. A celebration where we're not just eating food, although it is food, but we are receiving the life of Christ. A life that allows us to participate in this world, in eternal life, and to one day be with him forever. Praise be Jesus Christ. 
now and forever. And now let us proudly profess this faith that gives us the life of Christ. I believe in one God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father. Our response is, Lord, receive our prayer. That the church may constantly find renewal in the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. That those who experience poverty and hunger and for those who suffer prejudice or persecution, may be given their daily bread and the justice that comes from God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. For treatments and a cure for coronavirus, and for all those affected by this pandemic, whether physically, economically, emotionally, or spiritually, we pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. For those prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, and for the prayers offered on our live stream broadcast, we pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. For our beloved departed, especially Sal Parisi, Scott Houlihan, and for Jack Brown, whom we remember at this Mass today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. Heavenly Father, Please grant us these prayers and petitions, if it is what you desire for us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our redeeming and all of his holy church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest, who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer it himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this, sacri offer, this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, 
that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in this present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. It is wonderful to be here with you this evening as a reminder. If you are able and would like, in just a few moments, we'll go outside and distribute Holy Communion to those who could not be with us under the front portico of the church. Uh, so it'll be our honor to do that. We do that after every Mass, um, which we celebrate here at St. Joseph's. Just a uh, quick notice. Um, as you are aware, the Diocese of Harrisburg uh, a few months ago filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy earlier this year. In accordance with the bankruptcy court's order, we have to read this letter um, from Bishop Gaynor. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as you are aware, the Roman Catholic Diocese of Harrisburg filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in February this year. We made this decision in an effort to ensure our financial ability to both provide fair and equitable compensation for survivors of past sexual abuse and to ensure the future of the missions and ministries of the Roman Catholic Church within our diocese territory. In support of this effort, I have asked your pastor and parochial vicar to read this letter to you this weekend 
and again in September to ensure that we reach as many survivors as possible before the claim filing deadline. The claims filing deadline is on November 13th, 2020. Claims can be made confidentially. Information on how to submit a claim has been posted at every church and school within the diocese. We have also made this information available on the diocese's webpage and webpage managed by the diocese claims and balloting agent, Epic Restructuring, at their website. Additionally, information will also be published at least twice in your parish's weekly bulletin, and you can ask any priest within our diocese for more information as well. I ask that you please share this information with your family and friends who are not here today. Thank you in advance for your cooperation. Please be assured of my continuing prayers, and I ask that you please keep me as well as all the priests, deacons, and consecrated religious of our diocese in your prayers as well. Sincerely in Christ, Most Reverend Ronald W. Gaynor. We have all the information on this process posted on our parish website, and you can find it on our diocesan website as well. And now, brothers and sisters, let us pray the prayer to St. Mike. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. It was wonderful to be with you. We look forward to being with you next week here or hopefully one day in our church. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.